you know, we write about doing good business. If we can't deliver profits, you know, how do we look to our readers? Revenue is also important because if you're not maintaining revenues, you're not able to invest back in the product and back in people. This is The Talent Show, a new podcast series from FT Talent, a hub of innovation from the Financial Times. It's hosted by under 30s for the under 30s around the world. This second series is about all the aspects the FT organization is covering today, from editorial to development, from data to talent. I am Virginia Stagni, and this is a guide we designed to inspire you to be the one driving innovation and change. Welcome to the show. Good morning or good afternoon or good evening. It really depends on when you're listening to our FT Talent Show today. I have here with me Sophie Martin, that is the Deputy Chief Financial Officer of the Financial Times. How are you, Sophie? I'm really well. Thank you for having me. It's great to have you because, as uh, you might know, a lot of our challengers and listeners uh, do study business and economics and finance. So um, as I start every uh, chat, it's really interesting for us as listeners to really understand your career path and journey and how it can be inspiring for all of us. So what did you study and how did you land at the Financial Times? Of course, yeah, I, uh, I kept my options open uh, through education. So I chose quite traditional subjects for my A-levels, English, maths and French. And I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do for my degree. And I actually took a psychometric test to, to get a in few indicators. And it came out with lawyer or florist, which is quite an interesting combination. Um, so... I was interested in law. I liked the idea of studying law. I felt like it was, you know, a good, solid subject. It wouldn't close any doors. Um, so I did a law degree and I did it with French and I spent a year in France studying law there, which I really enjoyed. Um, but when it came to the end of my degree, I was in a bit of a hurry to start work. And um, I, I, w- I was, you know, my family's very international. I thought, you know, narrowing down on law in England might, you know, might narrow my options in the future. So I looked at some of the opportunities that are available out there for graduates and I zeroed in on finance. You know, it looked like, you know, a large proportion of leaders in, in business have a, uh, have a background in finance. It looked like a really interesting role. You're at the heart of almost every decision that an organisation makes. Um, and a good solid choice would be to move into it as a profession. So I applied to some graduate schemes um, in accountancy firms and I joined a mid-tier firm called Mazars mm-hmm. and that gave me a really good grounding. Moved to London, I was a young professional just kind of getting used to being in an office and learning the ropes but also studying at the same time. So uh, training to be a chartered accountant and that involves practical so learning on the job but also a series of exams it wasn't easy it was a lot of a lot of work and you know but I was really focused and really committed to what I was trying to what I was trying to accomplish this is very interesting like do you think you would be able to do the same kind of journey today when we are overqualified sometimes to even start a career with a two free masters and uh, it's so you need to be specific and vertical since the beginning. What do you know? What's your passion? Oh, law and then finance. Do you think you will be able to do something like that today? I think it's tough to narrow down your options when you're 18 and decide exactly what you want to do. I mean, I had very little idea of what all the jobs were out there and what I might be good at. And, I, you know, I liked that it was sort of iterative and I, and I found my way into, you know, what suited me and, and what I enjoyed. Um, But I'm not sure I could have, I didn't have that mapped out for myself at age 18. And I would really sympathize with anybody who feels like that that's what they need to do. I think it's great also that you can do almost any degree. And that's a solid grounding in education for almost anything. And it doesn't have to be vocational. I think also, you know, the requirement to do masters and more and more education just pushes back when you start into the workforce as well. So um, would you still recommend to get the certifications you got today to a younger finance enthusiast out there? 
I mean, I'm biased and I would definitely say go for it with the ACA and I think it's a great grounding because I, I love that it required practical skills as well. I learned on the job. I learned to be part of a team. I was exposed to lots of different industries, lots of different sizes of clients. It was a client-facing role. But also um, in the study itself, you know, lots of technical skills, obviously audit and accounting and tax are in there, but there's lots of business management content as well. Um, that's useful to apply in, in lots of different ways. Um, I think have your eyes wide open, talk to people who've done different qualifications. There are other qualifications that you can do in accounting and finance, um, some that don't require you to work in an accountancy firm. You could join the FT and do SEMA or ACCA, for example, or any other, uh, other industry. Um, and also just be ready um, for some hard work because it does involve some sacrifices to study and work at the same time. So hats off to anybody who undertakes it, but stay focused on the prize and, and what you're trying to do. And Sophie, how did you land to the Financial Times? Why visit the decision? Um, I was really excited when I saw the job description at the FT. You know, not just the role, but being part of the Financial Times. Um, I have a real affinity with the brand, and I, and I did from the very beginning. You know, it stands for quality um, and high standards, and I knew that it would be somewhere where I could deliver my best. Um, and I felt passionate about what the FT was trying to do, its mission. Um, so I was really excited and thrilled and couldn't believe that it happened to me. What did it take and uh, to get into the deputy chief of financial officer role? Like, what were the different like kind of roles that you had the opportunity to see in uh, in this journey? That uh, do you think uh, would be would you think that are interesting for younger people that might think about joining the finance team? The role that I joined to do was partnering some of our um, magazine and events products in what we call the FT Specialist Portfolio Today, um, Investors Chronicle. And then the opportunity came to support what we now call the FT Professional Business, which is our corporate licenses business, where we offer FT.com access to, to corporates under enterprise licenses. And we were just launching that model. I think my next step was into a portfolio role where I reported numbers to the CEO in terms of how the whole group was, was performing. And then an opportunity came up to, in uh, Pearson. That was a VP finance role. So I applied for that and got it. And that was really exciting and gave me exposure to, you know, a bigger size of business, a bigger portfolio, a FTSE 100 environment. Um, and they just restructured the business into more of a matrix structure and finance was really leading the way in terms of how that was put into practice um, where the lines of accountability are drawn um, how we reset strategy for the different groups were established and there's a different kind of pressure in finance in a FTSE 100 business because you're answering to investors on a quarterly basis and explaining your performance it was fascinating and I really enjoyed my time there and then you came back to the Financial Times. What do you think is the most important financial metric to really try to track and see the performance uh, of a media group within the media ecosystem? And how do you feel about the FT um, financial strategy around these metrics? Yeah, I mean, for us, profit is really important um, for a sustainable business over the long term. And to give us credibility across the market. You know, we write about doing good business. If we can't deliver profits, you know, how do we look to our readers and the market? So profit is important, maintaining a sustainable business model. Revenue is also important because if you're not maintaining revenues, you're not able to invest back in the product and back in people. Um, so I would say revenue, profit, margin are important across across any business in terms of financial metrics but we obviously track non-financial metrics too and uh, which are those so at the ft part of our core strategy is growing a recurring revenue base and that comes from building a robust uh, subscriptions business so we track closely our paying audience um, we also look at stickiness, so whether they're likely to stick around. And so we look at engagement, whether they're coming back to our product regularly um, and retention rate, whether they're willing to renew. 
um, and the price, the average price that they're willing to pay. Media is no different from uh, other industries. Uh, the kind of uh, sustainability and how healthy the business needs to show and uh, needs, needs to be is, is quite uh, important. Um, let's go back to, to a bit of career tips and advice. Um, let's imagine that some of our uh, listeners might be very interested in uh, the M&A world at the moment. And I think that's a very hot part of your department. It's very intriguing. It's super fun. Can you tell us a bit more about merger and acquisition at the FT? What does it mean and how can it be cool for someone out there interested in M&A to join? Yeah. I mean, before I took the role in Pearson, I was involved in a transaction and I really enjoyed it. I got a real buzz out of being part of that team. And, and, it, and it's exciting. You're sort of courting a new business and, you know, there's, there's an element of selling what we have, finding out what they have. It's, it's a, bit of a bit of a game. And then the role that I came back into the FT to do from Pearson was actually... Um, leading our corporate development function, I was the I was the only one. I say leading, but it was it was me, um, and also driving forward our synergy program with Nikkei. So that was the role I came in to do, and I was involved in in several acquisitions. So I think um, you know finance is a good grounding for a, a role in in M and A if that's what you're interested in. Um, I think it's you know it's where a lot of opportunity is for us. We're we're very active. Nikkei's very supportive. Um, of us growing our portfolio and um, um, using acquisitions to deliver growth and brand extension. I think it's it's quite interesting to see how a media group like ours is trying to expand and uh, uh, test as well new areas and new industries. How do you see uh, the next acquisitions coming or the things that you have recently uh, done as, as an M&A team and division? Um, actually, like, these are the kind of things that we're looking at as a media group. Like these are the new, like is it data events? What kind of tools? Can you tell us a bit more about that? We are definitely attracted to businesses that have a recurring revenue base that deliver, you know, have the potential to deliver profits. That um, businesses where we can amplify their growth through our brand, our infrastructure, our expertise, our playbook. Um, we recently um, took a majority stake in Endpoints, which is a biopharma news business. Um, so that that ticks all the boxes. You know, it's US based. We can we can bring in our expertise, help them to deliver their growth plans. Oh, that's great. And uh, I know as well that uh, you know uh, Alpha Grid uh, Media Limited and the uh, Longitude Research has been like have been over two uh, great acquisitions. Uh, can you tell us a bit more about what they do? They're both content businesses that support clients in delivering a message. So Alpha Grid is more journalistic led. So it tells a story using different creative formats, whether that's um, doing an audio for for, uh, for clients, podcasts, pop-up newsroom, video, animation. Um, Longitude is more um, based in thought leadership. And research so they'll do they'll do research and they'll draw um, interesting distinctive insights and, and and develop a message for clients based on that so they're you know they're they're sort of similar in terms of purpose but quite different in their approach from a career tips perspective what do you think is um, the kind of skills that you're looking for in new candidates I think um, curiosity, um, willingness to learn, um, a good attitude, um, being a team player, um, having an interest in, in the role, having, um, you know, demonstrating a good understanding of our business and some research in, in our business and understanding what, what we're all about. We just started a graduate scheme in our in our department last year, which I was really excited about. We've we've also had good success with our interns, by the way. We've have a summer intern program. We're just entering into our third year, which is it's been brilliant. So one of those interns took the graduate role that we created in our team, okay. and she also attended new school. Um, and it can be really refreshing you know, having a new perspective and somebody who hasn't had lots of experience in finance and asks good questions um, and is keen and excited to be there and, and yeah. 
Okay, that's great. So if you're listening to this, uh, definitely check out uh, potential internships and graduate schemes coming uh, uh, your way from the financial team. And in terms of freshness, one of the different parts of this podcast is that we get two um, young people, if we can say so, but definitely bright minds, as I'd rather say, uh, to join us in the podcast studio. So let me welcome Owen and Pavel to ask uh, you, Sophie, a few questions uh, today. Owen, what did you study? Where are you coming from? Tell us a bit about you. Yeah, of course. So I'm Owen Chen. So nice to meet you guys. I was from Hong Kong, China, and I was living in Singapore for five years. And currently I was studying in UCL, majoring in uh, management science in my second year. I was very interested in uh, finance, especially uh, mergers acquisitions. And I'm going to do a summer intern in Berkeley. Okay, great. So Owen, what's your question for Sophie? So, uh, you know, I was very interested in MAs, mergers, acquisition, and going to do a summer intern in just next month. So, given your intensive experience in FT and now is uh, the CFO, so it was really impressive. So, uh, I, so I, I guess my question would be like, uh, for me, going to do a summer intern, so, uh, you know, like what's the things that I should be taken on of and how I'm going to, uh, you know, to convert full time to, you know, a full time job. And um, so, and also like, how I gonna know like MA is the that's the destinations I gonna be or you know there's other divisions in banking so finance uh, industry as well. Congrats on the internship. That's really exciting and I definitely think it's a good it's a good way to learn and make the most of the opportunity ask questions, put your hand up to get involved in projects, make it known that you're interested in certain topics um, and they might be able to steer you towards being involved in, in anything that you're interested in. So I guess the opportunity is there for you to, to make the most of it um, and you know that they'll want you to have a good experience. So um, partner with them to, to make it a success, I would say. Great, thank you very much. Pavel, what about you? Hi guys, nice to meet you. It's a pleasure to be on this podcast. So my name is Pavel. I'm currently studying economics at UCL. Uh, I'm mentor for Economics and Finance Society. I'll be joining Goldman Sachs this summer. My question to you is regarding your career at the Financial Times, as well as the transition you made in the middle of your career to Pearson. Uh, we talked a lot about joining the FT, but what made you stay? And what advice would you share with young professionals who might also be making such career transitions? I really feel passionate about what the FT is trying to do and that's the thing that's kept me here. Uh, as I said, I think earlier, I just feel really a, a, an affinity with, with the product and, and the purpose. Um, but also the people, I think it's really important that you know you surround yourself with people that inspire you, that interest you, that help you to grow, that keep you motivated. Um, and, you know, the FT is as Ginia was saying, is, you know, a diverse and inclusive place full of all sorts of different and smart people. You know, we're really fortunate at the FT with the brand that we have um, that we attract some really talented people. So I think choose a business that inspires you, look at the people that you'd be working alongside, you know, do they, are they going to get the best out of you? Are you going to enjoy spending time with them? Are you going to learn from them and grow? And I think, you know, transition is good. I think, you know, don't trade in the trust and reputation that, that you've built at the place that you are too too quickly. But equally, you know, making a move somewhere else can will, will help you, expose you to different circumstances, different stakeholders, different types of working, different products, different industries. I would say make the most of any role that you have within any organisation um, stretch it to the max, look if there's an opportunity to grow within that business. And if there isn't, that's okay. Make a move somewhere else. Um, you know, your career is yours to own um, and you're in control of those decisions at every, every milestone that you faced. Thank you very much. Thank you. I think this last point that you made is uh, so interesting. You're the master of your own path. And I think it's very important to think what makes you feel good passionate and fulfilled. So thank you so much for this uh, piece of advice. Owen and Pavel, thank you so much for being with us. Of course, uh, thank you, Sophie, for uh, your uh, insight and your time today. Thank you. 
This has been The Talent Show, which is produced by the FT Talent team, Aya Al-Shihabi, and me, Virginia Stani. Our podcast producer, editor, and sound engineer is Arturo Ochoa, and our social media producer is Letizia Clementi. Our music is by Dennis Kishuk. Check out all of the Talent Show episodes at fttalent.ft.com, subscribe wherever you get your podcasts, and follow FT Talent on socials for updates. Until next time, and keep listening. Interested in going to business school? I have a suggestion for you today. You can get the best advice from admission centers and officers and successful alumni with a new newsletter from the Financial Times. MBA 101, a new weekly email series. You can learn everything you need to know about applying for the best MBA programs out there in just six weeks. Sign up MBA 101 on the Financial Times website.